Can you imagine what collectors must have thought when they first pulled 1953 Topps baseball cards from wax packs that summer? I mean, just in the last year, they had graduated from Bowman paintings to black and white or color photos, depending on the set. And now they wanted kids to accept artwork again? That was the general plan. Only the artwork that graced 1953 top sets were the masterpieces of painter Gary Dvorak. And whether or not little leaguers at the time dug the cards, one thing is certain today. The 1953 top set is one of the most popular and revered issues to ever hit the hobby, and it likely contributed mightily to the downfall of Bowman and Topps' subsequent monopoly. To celebrate what may or may not be the most beautiful set of all time, let's take a run through the most valuable 1953 Topps baseball cards. These rankings may surprise you in some cases, thanks to short prints that elevated commons or lesser stars to upper echelons of the set. Whatever the case, approximate values are culled from the PSA Sports Market Report price guide for PSA 7 specimens. Hold on to your paintbrushes. 1953 Topps Mickey Mantle, number 82. The 1951 Bowman may be Mantle's true rookie card, and the 1952 Topps Mantle is the big kahuna among modern baseball cards. But if you had to choose the best Mantle card based on pure beauty and eye appeal, how could you pick against the 1953 Topps Classic? You couldn't, not without a fight at least. Come at me, brah. Enough collectors and fans agree with me to put the price tag of this monster well over $10,000 in PSA 7. 1953 Topps Willie Mays, number 244. All that I said about Mantle above pretty much applies to Mays here, except slightly less amplified. The Say Hey Kid doesn't command quite the attention and prices with his cardboard that the Mick does, but Mays' early cards remain a true hobby royalty some 65 to 70 years after their release. This 1953 Topps Beauty shows Mays crouched in a fielding pose with like a farm in the background. An unusual but gorgeous look that helps the second Mays Topps card push $6,000 in graded near mint condition. 1953 Topps Jackie Robinson, number one. While both Mays and Mantle cards were short printed, this Robinson Beauty was actually double printed. Two Jackies on each sheet. But that's not surprising considering that Robinson was already an established Major League superstar who was a cog of some great Brooklyn Dodgers teams. That status is also reflected in that number one on the back of Robinson's card, which today is a $1,500 buy in PSA 7 condition. 1953 Topps Satchel Page, number 220. Satchel Page turned 47, at least in the summer of 1953, yet he also made more than 50 appearances on the mound for the old St. Louis Browns. Impressive as that was, though, Page had already built his legend in the Negro Leagues, and he would eventually make it to the Hall of Fame on the strength of that combined resume. Another double-printed masterpiece, this one sells for around $1,200 in PSA 7. 1953 Tops Johnny Padres, rookie card number 263. Padres was a fresh-faced 20-year-old left-hander for the Brooklyn Dodgers when this card first hit collections across the land. He fared well enough, pitching to a 9-4 record with a 4.23 ERA. He eventually developed into a steady and important piece of the Dodgers rotation as they made it to the World Series after World Series, even after the team moved to Los Angeles. But Padres' middling star power alone wouldn't have landed him on this list. For that, he needed the help of a short print scarcity. The whole package, though, makes this a $500 card in PSA 7. 1953 Topps Yogi Berra, number 104. Yogi Berra, on the other hand, was a bona fide superstar by 1953, well before then, actually. In fact, Berra had won his first American League MVP award in 1951, and then would add two more in 1954 and 1955. In all along the way, he handled the Yankees pitching staff and helped power the offense as New York built the 1950s dynasty. A few managerial stints, thousands of malapropisms, and a Cooperstown plaque later, and it's no wonder this serious-looking rendition of Yogi clicks in at about $400 in PSA 7. 1953 Tops Milt Bowling, number 280. So this is a pretty strange one to appear on this list, right? 
I mean, Bowling was a member of the Boston Red Sox during Ted Williams' run in Beantown, and that sort of tide lifts all boats. And sure, this is Bowling's rookie card, but does that really matter when the player in question hit 241 with 19 home runs and 94 RBI his entire career? It does when you're talking about the last card and a short print of one of baseball's most enduring and endearing sets. In fact, it matters to the tune of $400 in PSA 7. 1953 Tops Jim Gillum, rookie card number 258. Another Brooklyn Dodger semi star. Another short print rookie card. Another high number. It all adds up to another unexpected member of our most valuable list for 1953. Gillum was no slouch spending 14 seasons in the Dodgers infield and showing some speed and power along the way. But the $375 price tag for this one owes more to just Junior's on-field talents and his 1953 Rookie of the Year award. 1953 tops Warren Spawn, number 147. Spawn insane and pray for rain and go ahead and thank the cardboard gods if you were lucky enough to pull the Boston Braves ace from a wax pack. Well, okay, technically by the time Spawn greeted collectors, they were the Milwaukee Braves. But Spawn was still a lockdown number one who had already won four 20-season records under his belt. And he was a beeline to Cooperstown. And this snazzy short print today brings in around $265 in PSA 7 condition. 1953 Tops Harvey Haddix, number 273. Harvey Haddix had some amazing moments on the baseball field, including quite a few when he went 20-9 for the 1953 St. Louis Cardinals to finish second in the voting for Rookie of the Year behind Gillum. He also won a World Series with the 1960s Pittsburgh Pirates. None of his moments is quite so memorable or painful as the time he threw 12 perfect innings in 1959, only to see teammate Don Hoke boot a Felix Montilla grounder. Eddie Matthews, Hank Aaron, and Joe Adcock then conspired to push Montilla across the plate, and Haddix lost the game to the Braves, too. Add that legacy to a short printed high number, and you have all the makings of a $250 card in slabbed near mint condition. 1953 Tops Phil Rizzuto, number 114. Scooter was a Yankee legend before the New York faithful even knew who Mickey Mantle was, and he remained a beloved figure right up until his death in 2007. Thanks to Derek Jeter, Rizzuto lost his hold on the title of greatest Yankee shortstop ever, but he still checks in here at $225 plus in PSA 7. Like our video? Then like our videos and subscribe to our channel. WaxPackGods.com